Well, hello, friends. Blessings to you. This is Pastor Ben here. This is day four of five days of Hanukkah Miracles, the Facebook challenge. I hope uh, you've been getting encouraged, you've been getting inspired, and uh, really the whole hope uh, for this uh, five-day challenge on Facebook is that we will be aware, someone say aware, we will be aware of the goodness of God in this season of Hanukkah, but also we would access, someone say access, we would access the blessings, the graces, and that we will manifest it. Amen? And uh, remember, uh, most people don't uh, manifest something because they're not able to, they're not aware of it, right? Ignorance kills. Uh, so lack of knowledge, uh, people perish. So, uh, you know, so I hope you've been uh, encouraged. I hope uh, God's been ministering to you. And really, uh, because Hanukkah is a feast, a time of miracles, some say miracles. I'm believing for miracles for all of you. Uh, I believe even on the second day, as we talked about multiplication, financial miracles. I'm believing for financial miracles for you, debt cancellations, that God will multiply you in every era of your life. Amen. And even yesterday, uh, uh, talking about uh, victory, you know, uh, being victorious, and how the Maccabees were victorious. And one man in Matiya who stood up against the grain and the spirit of righteousness, and a whole revolution took place. Listen, remember, we need to have victory in our hearts, victory in our minds over fear, anxiety. We need to be courageous Christians. Remember, courage is contagious, okay? And uh, uh, unfortunately, a lot of people are attacked in their minds and in their hearts and their souls. So yesterday's teaching was to set us free, to deliver us from fear and that God would activate, some say activate, God would activate us in faith to move forward to the next level. And now today... I'm going to talk about taking back your temple, cleansing your temple. I'm believing for a soul cleanse and as well for a healing in your body. So if you need healing in your body, stay tuned. This is for you. I'm going to give some foundational teaching uh, just about the five days uh, of Hanukkah miracles and also just uh, revelate on that and then uh, do some teaching on healing and then talk about uh, uh, maybe one or two testimonies. And then after that, I'm going to pray for the sick. And I'm going to believe that God's going to heal you uh, from the inside out. All right? If you need uh, healing in your body, if you've been struggling with a physical ailment, uh, disease, and infirmity, I'm going to believe that today, through this broadcast, Jesus will touch you, He will heal you, and He will deliver you, set you free once and for all. Amen. So, uh, of course, uh, I gave a whole introduction about Hanukkah. And the importance of Hanukkah. And you can find all of that uh, from day one, which was posted on Monday. Of course, day two, uh, I talked about the multiplication of oil. Some would say oil. The multiplication of oil and how the oil multiplied and manifested. One day's worth of oil multiplied into eight days. So that's the realm that we're living in right now. Okay. Um, uh, of course, yesterday, uh, on day three of five days, uh, I talked about victory. A uh, one man named Matniyahu stood up, and there was a whole victory, there was a revolution. And again, uh, there comes a time in your life where you cannot take uh, the, the, the bullying, you cannot take, uh, you know, uh, all of, uh, you know, the taunting and the mocking. You know, there comes a time in your life where you have to take a stand, and you have to push back, and you have to fight your enemies, and you have to speak up against the injustice. There comes a time in your life. And, uh, you know, so God is anointing people with victory so that you will break out of the funk. You will break out of the, the things that you're stuck in and stagnant in, uh, accepting sin as norm, accepting certain things around you as normal. It's not normal. No, we need to stand up and we need to uh, fight because we are in a spiritual battle. Remember yesterday I talked about uh, reaping rewards and the spoils of war. Okay, uh, there's rewards when you win in a battle, okay? But if you don't want to go in battle, how will you win? And if you don't win, how will you gain the spoils of war? So there's many spoils of war, rewards uh, for being victorious in battle, okay? I don't know about you, but I want to be the gold prize winner in the Olympics. I don't just want to have silver or, or bronze or copper or steel, or mildew, okay? I want the number one. I said we the best. <clears throat> now today I want to talk about 
how the Maccabees took back their temple. Imagine your home, okay? Imagine your home. Uh, it's a wonderful, beautiful home. It's passed down from your father, from your mother. Imagine you have a beautiful home, beautiful estate, maybe about two, three acres, big, large. You know, you have butlers, you have, uh, you know, you have maids, you have drivers. It's a beautiful home. Uh, and it was your grandfather's home. And it was passed down from generation to generation. Right, they worked hard to get it. And now it's in your stead. It's in your ownership. Now imagine all of a sudden uh, the Brits, okay, uh, the English come into town. The English come into town and they just take your land away. They take your home away, okay. Uh, they start raping uh, the, the butlers and raping the maids and they start doing evil things against them, against their will. They start beating them, bullying them. Uh, you know, taking advantage of them, and they kick you and your family out of the house. Imagine that. And what was once a beautiful estate, a beautiful home, is now desecrated, okay? Uh, there's, there's stains all over the walls. It's dirty. It's not upkeep. The garden is totally wild and chaotic. Uh, the furniture is everywhere. There's beer bottles everywhere. And, you know, I mean, just imagine. It's just gruesome newsome, okay? It's just grotesque. All right, and what was once a beautiful, lavish uh, home passed down from your grandparents uh, is now desecrated, taken over by the English, okay? And they turned it into a, a war zone, a camp for the soldiers uh, to have their nightly festivities with prostitutes and brothels. And, and, you know, just so imagine that scene. And here where they kick you out, okay, and you're outside, and now you're forced to live with your family uh, in this little bungalow, afraid for your life, and you're mad, you're angry because you once lived an incredible lavish life in your home, which is rightfully yours. And now because the English came into town, shoot, I feel the Holy Ghost, they took over, they kicked you out, they desecrated, took advantage of everything, and now you're here. And now you're looking at your home, it's totally destroyed, it's, it's totally taken over, it's dirty, it's... It's not what it was used to be, and now you're angry. Now, what do you do? Okay, now what do you do? Are you just going to sit back and, and be a yes man and be a man pleaser? Or are you going to stand up and try to sneak in and, and, and take those guards' lives and, you know, uh, and, and take, take over and take back what is rightfully yours? Imagine that. Now, here's Hanukkah. Hanukkah is a story of how... A group of motley crew banditos, Jewish warriors that were all separated, just regular common day people, not trained, not skilled. They came together and said, we need to take back our land. We need to take back the temple. We need to take back our homes. We need to take back the freedom of worship, our rights, our identity. We need to take back... Uh, the lands that our forefathers and mothers that God himself has promised us. We need to take back our land, our freedom, our worship, our identity, our song, our music. We need to take back, okay? And that's what happened. But imagine this. It's not just your grandfather's home that's desecrated, but it's actually God's home. Imagine this. The White House. I know some of you, actually most of you watching here, uh, you all love your president and uh, pray for your leaders. Okay, you're, you're not a liberal, demonized uh, person. <laughs> okay, but uh, Im imagine, you know, uh, the White House. Literally, probably one of the most important landmarks in all the earth right now. Okay, imagine the White House of, in Washington, D.C., in the United States, the White House in the District of Christ of D.C., not District of Columbia, in the District of Christ. Imagine a White House where the President, the Commander in Chief is, and that boom, White House has fallen. All right, uh, the Chinese have taken over, the Germans have taken over. All right, uh, the United Nations have taken over, which might actually happen, uh, try to happen, but it won't in Jesus' name. Amen. Bam. And imagine the White House has fallen. Now imagine you, the most important place where literally everything on earth, in, in America and on earth, is being, uh, is being handled from. It's really the operations bed. It's, it's, 
It's, it's the place where everything is being done from. The center, in a sense, of this nation. The center of, of the governments of the world. Imagine that. And it's, it's fallen, it's taken over. Now, that's what, what happened with the temple of God. Because the temple of God is the most important place in all the universe. It's literally where God himself, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, dwell. It's where God lived. And that place, the temple, was desecrated. Someone say desecrated. Now, let me tell you how it was desecrated, okay? What, what the Seleucids did is they brought in pigs, okay? I know some of you like lechon. Listen, I like pork belly. I like all that stuff too, okay? But imagine... <clears throat> they brought in these dirty pigs, and pigs were unclean, unsanctified animals to the Jews. The Jews could not even touch pigs. They couldn't even eat pigs, okay? It's against their law. It's not kosher, which means it's not clean. And so imagine uh, the Seleucids bringing pigs, unclean animals, into your father's home and sacrificing unclean animals to idols what do they do they set up idols okay little krishnas buddhas Hare krishnas they set up little idols all throughout the temple where literally god's presence dwelled my gosh they set up little idols madonna biden harris you know trump whatever they set up little idols within the temple of god and they began to sacrifice and desecrate the whole temple with pig's blood Okay, unclean animals, unclean spirits, unclean worship. Follow me here today. Because today, you're going to get healed in your body if you need a physical healing. Now imagine they do, do so. And now imagine they're, they're cutting people's bodies. Because that's what they do. Uh, whenever they sacrifice unto the idols, the human, humans would cut their bodies. They would slash their bodies and they would bleed out as human sacrifices. Imagine sacrificing children in the temple. Imagine, uh, you know, where the temple prostitutes would come and there would be orgies and there would be all this unclean <clears throat> sexual uh, worship and incense uh, going onto idols. Now, I know this is very graphic, but it's the Bible, okay? Uh, so imagine all of that happening in your father's home. Imagine all of that happening in your parents' home. Imagine all that happening in God's home, in the temple of God. Oh, no, no, no. So this is what's happening right now. The Jews are kicked out into a tiny little corner. And the Seleucids have taken over. And they're desecrating. They're defiling. They're, they're having profane uh, immorality, idolatry against God. Against God's people. It's profane. It's, it's a violation. It's, it's evil. So, all of a sudden, one man in Matliyahu, we, we know this, he stands up against Antiochus, and now there's a revolution, and they take back the temple. Come on, somebody. They take back the temple. They take back the worship of God. They take back the purity of God. They take back their identity. I feel the Holy Ghost. They take back... The, the land, the place where literally God dwelled. They take back the freedom of worship. They take back the sanctity of their identity. They take back their home, the, the land, the, their father's home, the president's home. They take back the temple. And as they war against the tyranny, the Maccabees, after three years' time, they finally win the war. They take back the temple. And now worship is now rededicated to the Lord. That's why Hanukkah... Uh, it means dedication or rededication. Come on. Someone say, I rededicate my life to the Lord. Someone say, I dedicate my life to you, Jesus. So Hanukkah stands for dedication and rededication. And so they rededicated the temple back to God. I'm telling you here today. Doesn't matter what you've gone through. Doesn't matter if you've backslid. Doesn't matter if you've sinned. Doesn't matter if you've been angry at God, angry at your brother or sister. God is about to rededicate something, okay? You're about to rededicate yourself afresh and anew. God has taken back your temple. God is cleansing the temple. He's closing every evil door 
to the evil one, to every evil, unclean spirit, amen, so that no unclean spirit can come into your temple, no unclean, evil, profane spirit can come into your body, can come into your soul, so we're going to close those doors today, bang, 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 we're going to close those doors today, those enemy evil spirits will not have access to me, to you, to my family, to my future, to my soul, and we're going to close those doors today, bam, and we're going to fully take back and fully access the glory of God. Someone say amen. So that's what I want to talk about today. Taking back your temple. Taking back your sanity. Alright, let's go over to uh Baroska. Let's go over to 1 Corinthians 6 19. So today we're going to talk about uh, cleansing your temple, taking back your temple. Cleansing your temple, closing doors, and I'm going to believe for miracles and healing in your body. I've been seeing too many miracles, too many uh, healing miracles in people's bodies in the last few month, few weeks. I've been seeing too many healing miracles in people's bodies in the last few weeks. I mean, I'm telling you, just this last Sunday... You know, there was maybe about four people, their vision was getting better, so much better. So one of the ladies dropped their, their eyeglasses, and their eyeglasses was horrible. One man, he had a stroke for one year, and he was using a cane for one year, could barely walk. Boom, the power got hit him. He dropped his cane at the altar. So I have two new collections to the Benlin Museum of Healing. Amen. I'm telling you. Miracle signs and wonders. Amen. It's not the will of God for you to be in pain. It's not the will of God for you to suffer. It is not the will of God for you to be sick. It's not the will of God for you to be afraid. It's not the will of God for you to be poor, for you to be sad, for you to be depressed. It is not the will of God for you to be stuck in, in habits that are leading you away from holiness, from the Holy Ghost. It's not the will of God. For you to have generational curses and generational illnesses. It's not. Bam. Some of you are getting healed right now. Alright. 1 Corinthians 6.19. 1 Corinthians 6.19. Do you not know that your bodies are temples? Come on somebody. Your bodies are temples. Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost. Who is in you. Whom you have received from God. You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God with your bodies. Come on, young people. Glorify God with your bodies. <laughs> Bring Him glory with your body. With what you do with your body, in your body. Glorify Him with your body. So today we're talking about taking back the temple and cleansing the temple. Of course, Apostle Paul says in Corinthians, your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody. We already know there's a cleansing in the church happening right now. There's a cleansing in the prophetic happening right now rapidly. We already know that. Thank God. God is exposing. God is dealing with things. Uh, old leaders, uh, men, women of God, some of them have gone home. Some of them are being exposed. There's a cleansing and a shaking happening in the church and in the prophetic right now. I love what Bill Johnson said last night. I was watching uh, uh, Gene Bailey's Flashpoint with Kenneth Copeland. And Bill Johnson and uh, Dutch Sheets was on. And Lance Walnow, I believe. Lance Walnow. And I was watching Bill Johnson said, God is about to defend the prophetic ministry. Where, where there's so much attack and people, spirits trying to discredit the prophetic ministry. God is going to defend the prophetic ministry because the apostolic and the prophetic are, are foundational to our faith. It was really good. You guys need to watch it. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Your bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit whom you received from God. You are not your own. So today I'm talking about cleansing your temple, okay? And, and in order for our temples, our bodies, okay? Our bodies... To be clean, we need to be aware of what comes in to our bodies. What came 
into our bodies and what is wanting to come in right now into our bodies. You know, uh, you are what you eat. The common saying, you are what you eat. So what are you eating spiritually, mentally? Uh, what are you eating? Like, what are you listening to? What are you watching? Uh, what are you eating even physically? Okay. You know, we already know in America with sodium and fat and GMO and sugar, uh, you know, there's so much unhealthiness in America where these these big companies are trying to kill us. With the hey everybody bless you. I don't think that's ever happened to me in my life. But literally just, I don't know what happened. It just shut off. So uh, here I am back again. So thanks for joining. Uh, I guess there's just too much fire and truth, right? So anyways, um, you are what you eat. And unfortunately, so many of these American companies are feeding us crap. I mean, you know, you look at uh, some of the food that are served in the cafeterias of our schools. I mean, these pizzas are just, you know, it's not even pizza. It's made out of plastic, right? And uh, so, you know, the comment saying you are what you eat and um, your body is the temple. So uh, what is coming into your body? What are you allowing to come into your body? Are you having enough sleep? Are you having enough rest? Uh, you know, and that's why it's important for us to detox. It's important for us to cleanse. It's important for us to fast. It's important for us to, uh, you know, that's why for me, I love being in Hawaii. I love being in places like uh, in the outdoors because then I can really detox and I can really get healed and, and you know, uh, you know, scientifically, medicinally, I mean, just one hour out of the, you know, where there's green, where there's life, where there's nature, uh, you will be healed. Um, uh, I was listening to my friend Bob Hazlitt yesterday. Um, Bob Hazlitt, Prophet Bob, uh, you know, he got in a motorcycle accident, nearly died. And um, for three months, it was very hard for him to talk. Uh, and so what he would do is he would go outside into the wilderness and do grounding which is where you put your feet into the ground because all the electrolytes in the ground and all the minerals will bring healing to your body. So he did that for three months and it really healed him. But, um, you know, so many people struggle with pain in their body and um, uh, pain in their soul uh, in their emotions. Remember, uh, most of your physical ailments actually comes from mental or emotional ailments, okay? Most physical uh, infirmities actually come through emotional or mental open doors. And when the open door of unforgiveness or bitterness or anger is there, then many times there can become hemorrhoids, hemorrhages, there can become... Uh, unhealthy eating, there can become, uh, you know, drinking or, you know, smoking, different vices. There can come all these things that begin to deteriorate and kill your body. And all of a sudden you have diabetes, you have high blood pressure. All of a sudden, uh, you know, uh, something happens in your body. Now you have leukemia or, you know, you have cancer. You start growing, uh, you know, cysts or you start growing kidney stones or so. A lot of times physical ailments, it comes in our bodies through open doors in mental stress, uh, through our minds or through our emotions. Unforgiveness. Katie Souza does such incredible teachings on this. Um, but uh, when we keep holding anger and stress and unforgiveness, uh, that can really kill a person. Um, but, again, your bodies are the holy temple. Amen. So say, my body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Your bodies are the, holy, ho the temple of the Holy Spirit. Um, so, why do we give our bodies dishonor? Why do we dishonor our bodies? Why do we not take care of our bodies? Why do we not, uh, you know, esteem our bodies as His temple? We need to take care of it. We need to steward this. Because the Holy Ghost lives in us. The Holy Ghost lives in here. Come on. So, um, uh, you know, unfortunately, too many people live with pain. 
they they learn to just get by with pain. Like I said, it's not the will of God for you to be in pain. It is not the will of God for you to be sick, for you to be suffering. Jesus paid for it on the cross. Jesus paid for it by giving his body. That's why when you and I take communion, we take the elements. We take the bread which signifies his body. I am partaking of his perfection, of his perfect whole land body. And I partake of it so that I can receive the nourishment and the healing, shalom, the sozo, the power of God in my own body. <clears throat> if you need a new lung, you take his lung. If you need a new brain, you take his brain. If you need new eyes, you take his eyes. Come on. He, he gave up every part of his body. He gave up his whole body, his whole life, so that we would become like him. <laughs> So, um, right now I want to talk about closing some doors because uh, the temple has 12 gates, okay? Now, imagine here's a temple. And now all around, there's walls around the temple, okay? And around the walls, there's 12 different gates. Someone say gates, okay? There's 12 gates around the temple, okay? And um, like the dung gate, which was specifically where, where uh, you know, poop Okay, where human waste, animal waste was relieved from. There's a dung gate, there's a sheep gate, there's the gold gates, there's different gates, 12 different gates to come into the temple. Okay. Now there's certain gates that are um, uh, only uh, ordained for certain people to come through, like the priests and the Levites. Okay, certain gates. Now there's other gates that are specifically only set for certain purposes, okay? There's 12 gates, imagine that. And through these 12 gates, um, there can be unclean things that come through, through these 12 gates. Unclean, immoral, uh, perverse spirits, influences can come in through these 12 gates. Now God wants us to cleanse our temples. Amen, come on somebody. Cleanse our temples from any unclean spirits, any unclean thoughts, anything that's desecrating our temple, our bodies, our soul, our mind, anything that's desecrating, contaminating, defiling. Cleanse it. But he also wants us to cleanse our doors, our gates. He wants us to close the doors to anything that should not come in. We need to close the doors. Uh, to evil, to sin, to uh, stress, to anxiety, to gossip, to slander. We need to close doors. All right? Close doors to doubters, okay? Fear mongers, okay? Close doors to people who don't believe uh, in the power of the gospel, who don't believe in prosperity, don't trust in prophecies, you know, who rather have a form of religion. But they don't embrace the power of God. Close those doors. Close doors to certain people that are causing you to sin. That are causing you to stumble. Come on somebody. That, are, that have soul ties with you. Close those doors. Unhealthy soul ties. Okay. Spirit ties. Physical ties. Close those doors. So, And when you close those doors. When you cleanse those doors. Ultimately, you'll be able to have a clean temple, holy temple. Come on. Shababa. Now remember, the Maccabees, they took back the temple. It's one thing for you to take something back. It's another thing for you to maintain the glory in that place. I'm going to say that again. It's one thing to take back your the temple. It's another thing to maintain cleanliness, holiness, the glory in the temple. You know, I, I'm always surprised to see uh, how, you know, people start off well, but they end, they continue on really bad. So, you know, like, here I am, I'm at a very nice uh, hotel here in Maui. And you could tell when certain places... They start not taking care of things properly. And now 
you know, it starts getting moldy, it starts getting old, they start painting things, or, you know, they're, they're trying to cover up little stains and different things like that. And, and so, the, uh, but then imagine maintaining something from glory to glory. We are meant to maintain our temples, the cleanliness, the holiness of our temples, of our bodies, the health and the well-being of our bodies from glory to glory. I know some of you are getting convicted right now. <clears throat> I want to tell you, the sickness and the pain you've been experiencing is not yours. Any sickness that you've, you've experienced is not yours. It was nailed to the body of Jesus. Any pain, any sickness, any emotional strife, anything, any, any cancer, uh, infirmity, anything you're experiencing in your body, your life, it's not yours. If it's of the curse before the cross, then it's not yours. It's done. It's under your feet. Shoo. So why do we accept it? Why do we take it? Why do we hold on to it? Why does it become our narrative? Why does it become our norm? I pray today that you'll be fully healed in your body, in your mind, in your soul, in your heart. And Jesus, not only will you take back the temple, not only will you cleanse the temple, but your temple will be healed and whole. And it will be it will be crispy cream donuts. Crispy cream. Now, people of God, I'm going to take time to pray for you if you need healing in your bodies right now. Uh, I'm very shocked to see how small the viewership is with this Facebook challenge. I wonder why. Maybe the lack of promotion. Maybe because we stopped allowing everybody to share everybody's uh, everybody and their, and everybody's grandma's posts uh, in this group. <laughs> maybe that's why. Uh, maybe people aren't interested in Hanukkah. I don't know. But tomorrow at 5 p.m. PST, I'm going to prophesy and pray for everybody. Every single person. Believing for Hanukkah miracles. I'm going to pray and prophesy over every single person on the broadcast tomorrow at 5 p.m. PST. So don't miss it. But right now, I want to pray for healing in your bodies, healing in your miracles. You got kicked off a few times. Wow. <laughs> I want to pray for healing in your bodies, healing in your miracles, uh, healing miracles uh, uh, in, your, in your health, okay? Now, if you need a healing miracle in your body or somebody in your family, okay? I want you to bring them up to your mind right now, okay? Um, and what I want you to do in this moment, okay, if you need a healing miracle, I want you to put your hand on the place where you need your miracle in your body, in your health, okay? Can you do that? Yes, okay? So thank you, Jesus, right now. I come against any pain. I come against any sickness, any illness. Spirit of death, spirit of infirmity, blindness, deafness, diabetes, uh, 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 heaviness. I just break it off right now. I thank for healing right now in your body, in your legs, in your eyes, in your breathing, in your chest, in your stomach. Congestion, go. I see that God is healing somebody uh, in your belly right now, uh, in your stomach. God is healing you. Robo, he's healing you of your knees, arthritis. Somebody here, it's been really hard for you to walk. Okay, God is healing you right now. Mandere, as some of you watching right now, it's been hard for you to sleep. Like insomnia, okay? God's going to heal you right now. I thank you, Lord, for healing virtue, healing power in people's bodies. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray for healing miracles in their bodies, in their families, their loved ones. Mandere ke roko. Mandere ke By His stripes, we were healed. 
I thank for healing virtue. I thank for the power of God. I thank for miracles right now. Take it. Release it. Right now in the name of Jesus. Mondo rakandara brusca. That pain shall no longer torment you. That sickness will leave your body right now in Jesus' name. The fire of God. Roko soko. Mande karababa sekere. Touch, heal, loosen, release. Now in the name of Jesus. Some say amen. Listen. If you needed a healing miracle right now and, and you just uh, put your hand in the place where you need your miracle, I want you to check your body right now. Check your body right now. I want you to testify, okay? Testify. Or maybe your family member, okay, you stood in the gap for, call them, text them right now. Thank you, Lord. Okay. If you're healing, if you're feeling uh, better in your body, if you're feeling healing, something's shifted, something's different in your body, I want you to comment below. I want you to testify. Maria says, my lungs feel better. Fire in your feet. Thank you for Miriam. Yes, I was standing again for Vanessa. My lungs feel better. What does that mean, Maria? Your lungs feel better. Talk to us. <laughs> Man that are better. Tina Parker, better in what way? Talk to us. Come on, you're taking back your temple, your body, your health, your well-being. I have asthma. Lord, I rebuke that asthma. I rebuke asthma 100%. Healing in your lungs, in your breathing. In, in your airwaves, healing right now over Maria, in the name of Jesus. And I just keep hearing the Lord saying, as you sing out, Maria, you will notice that you're healed. Because I see that you like to sing. Neck pain better. Amen, Tina. Come on. More, more, more. Neck pain. Fire. Bang, bang, bang. Yes. The enamel on my teeth are being strengthened. Amen, Ivana. Amen. Yeah, we saw dental miracles this weekend, too. Incredible. A lady came up and said that uh, she was she had pain in her teeth all the way in the back and was bleeding and she needed to go, but the bleeding stopped. There was no more pain. Yes, amen. New real teeth, amen. Come on, Lord, new teeth. New teeth right now. New teeth in the name of Jesus. New teeth, congestion gone. I can talk almost normally again, I believe. The final nose blow just now. Yes. Whew. My right knee was repaired, felt better, and a little flexible. I'm excited to work out. Amen. Right knee be healed. Knee be healed. Leg be healed. Congestion be gone. You shall walk. You shall work out. You shall jump. You shall run. And you shall leap. The Bible says he causes you to leap. He causes you to jump. Thank you, Father. Congestion gone. Amen. I can talk almost normally again. I release new teeth, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Mandara broska. New teeth, new teeth. New gums. Mandara broska rabandara diririsca. Good to see you, Benjamin. You got a good name there. Good to see another brother on the broadcast. On the broadcast. Anybody else, you need a healing, all right? Just testify. Move, move your body. Receive it, testify. Amen. Receive it, testify. I want you to comment below. Move it around. Check, check, check. I remember last time I was doing uh, Pray for the Sick with Prophet Sherelle Barrera, and tumors and lumps were dissolving. It was incredible. I can leave. Amen. Stephanie, are you actually leaping? Yes, amen. I pray for Pastor Mark. My hip pain has been making it hard for me to walk. From pain and neck and back pain, shoot down my legs. Power! Fire! Hip! Boom! Move! Be readjusted. I command it. The Bible says he sent his word and they were healed. By his word, by his stripes, we were healed. Send forth your word and they were healed. Your healing word. 
I release the healing word of Jesus right now in Jesus' name. Fire of God. Roko Sakaraka in the hip, in the knees, in the feet. Wow. Stephanie's leaping. She's leaping. Wow. And usually there will be pain, Stephanie, if you leaped, if you jumped. Or you couldn't do it. How long has it been since you did it? You couldn't do it, etc. I am the God that healeth thee. I am the Lord, your healer. You took my pain and you healed my disease. I am the Lord. Your healer. You are the God that healeth thee. <laughs> you are the Lord, my healer. You took my pain and you healed my disease. <laughs> All right, anybody else, you testify. Comment below, testify. Talk to me, talk to me. What's going on in your body? Well, it has since January 21st after my ACL surgery. That's right, Kelly. I've seen God do it. God will do it right now. Amen. Bam, bam, bam. Yes, amen, Stephanie. Be back at CrossFit by January. And hiking again. Yes. In the name of Jesus, bless you. He'll restore every area. Every area. Pastor Mark, speak healing to your feet. Speak healing to the bones, to the muscles, the tendons in your feet, Pastor Mark. Your feet are healed. Dip it in the glory. Dip it in the oil. Dip it in honey. Dip it. Shababa. Dip it, dip it, dip it, dip it. Someone say, I'm taking back my temple. My temple is clean. My temple is whole. Yes, Pastor Mark. Talk to us. How, how's your feet doing, Pastor Mark? Yeah, I'm really believing for that healing for you right now, Tina, as well. Amen. Yes, yes. Come on. Shababa. We close those doors. We cleanse our temple of any unclean spirits, anything that shouldn't be there. We close the doors. Only the right things, the right spirits, the right Holy Spirit, the right influences will come in. Thank you, Lord. <sighs> Amen. Look at that. Ivana testified she received a money miracle this morning. Amen. So it's a money miracles. Remember, yes, on Tuesday I talked about money miracles. Multiplication, financial miracles. Wednesday, I talked to you about, uh, you know, uh, mindset miracles, okay? Miracles in your mind, okay? And today, I'm talking about miracles in your body. Come on, shut up, Baba. Well, people of God, just pull on the anointing. I'm so glad you're here. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. I thank you, Father. Well, if you're blessed, if you're healed, I want you to comment, I'm healed. Like, you know God healed you. God touched you today. I want you to comment, 
I'm healed, all right? If God healed you, if God touched you today, amen? Aren't you so glad you came today? Thanks for coming. I appreciate you. This is my last day here in Maui. I'm actually flying back home tonight, okay? I'm flying back home tonight. I'll be back in Orange County tomorrow morning. So praise God, I'll be back at home. So remember, tomorrow I'm going to be back on at 5 p.m., okay? 5 p.m., I'm going to pray, prophesy over everybody. So hopefully there'll be a larger number of people here. If not, then we're going to be over in a quick jiffy. Amen. So glad to hear. Awesome, awesome. So glad to hear all this. Yeah, Tina, I'm believing for 100% healing for you, Tina. 100%. Thank you, thank you. Shoo. Hallelujah. 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 Well, bless you, friends. Thanks for joining me. Even on the second broadcast after Facebook. You know, we were talking about all the American corporations killing our people with the horrible food. And then it kicked us off. Kicked me off. Blessings to you. I'll see you tomorrow at 5 p.m. PST. Shalom.